there is this Byzantine media blitz that's all over the place on Twitter and elsewhere that the US is an oil exporter. Um, can you just briefly unpack how much oil and oil products the United States uses daily or yearly, and how much we produce domestically versus how much we import if you could just summarize that in as simple terms as possible because i think there's a lot of confusion about that right so so when when we hear people talk about oh the us is a net exporter of of oil okay they're talking about crude oil plus refined products like diesel gasoline etc okay now nobody else in the world except the united states defines net exporter that way. A country is a net exporter of oil if it exports oil. <laughs> if right. it exports more than it imports, okay? But since we're so, an energy launderer, we get to redefine what it means we, to be an exporter. We, exactly. So now without, you know, and again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, to be critical. The U.S. imports a lot less crude oil than it did, say, 10 or 15 years ago. Because of because the ten... shale situation. Right. We, we had to import a lot of light oil 10 or 15 years ago because we had, our, our production had declined. So we've, we've pretty much eliminated that. We, don't, we no longer have to import other countries' light oil. But since we don't produce very much of the heavy oil ourselves, we... Uh, never is a strong word. We it, it's very unlikely that we will ever and stop importing other people's oil until the world just doesn't use oil anymore. As long as we're in the business of exporting refined products, we need heavy oil or we can't do it. It's just that simple. So when people say we're energy independent, first of all, it's 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 really not true. It's really not true. Well, compared to Japan and Europe it, and the UK, it is. But but go on. Well, it, it, but it's still not true. I mean, we're we're a whole lot more energy independent than you know than than Japan and Europe. Okay, absolutely. But you know, now we're talking about you know, well, you know, who's I mean, of a bad lot, who's the best? Well, but so we're eighty to eighty-five percent energy independent, yes. But let's talk about. I mean, you can break that down if you like, but I want to talk about the oil part, especially. I think we're at we consume twenty, twenty-one million barrels of oil per day, and we produce twelve or eleven. Um, you... Well, again, now you know we consume. So, so nobody consumes crude oil, right? Right, okay. except the refineries. So... Except the refineries. So America consumes 20 million barrels a day of refined products, Got not it. oil. Okay. Okay. But so what we're real, so to keep the arithmetic straight, you know, let's talk about how much crude oil goes into American refineries and the amount of crude oil that goes into American refineries is something around the, you know, around 13 to 14 million barrels a day. Okay, the United States produces about 11 or 11 and a half million barrels a day. And so you could say, oh, well, we're almost there, <laughs> you know, a couple of more million barrels a day and we're there. Well, but what I just told you a little while ago is except that we turn around and export three or four million of our produced barrels elsewhere because we can't use it in refineries here. So we have to then import more appropriate oil to replace that and also get back to the 13 or 13 and a half million that goes into our refineries. And we consume 20 million barrels worth of product. Product. Now, and somebody is going to say, in fact, you said it to me in an email not very long ago. Well, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. How can we have 13 million go in and we get 20 million out? And the answer is, the simple answer is, is that a lot of what we consume are natural gas liquids, many of which don't come from, from this refining column at all. They come from natural gas. 
completely different source. And so, you know, an awful lot of what we consume go into the plastics that you talk about, uh, go into all sorts of natural gas liquids. That and, and then there's biofuels. Okay, there's you know a million, and, and I don't even know what the night number is, but it's it's more than a million barrels a day of what we call gasoline comes from corn. But that's counted in our consumption. And then there's another thing called refinery gain, that when you, when you take crude oil, which has a very high density, and you refine it into products that have a lower density, there's actually an added volume. There's more oil. There's more product that comes out than goes in. So you take all that confusing gobbledygook that I just mentioned, and the, and the arithmetic does add up. But, but just, just to make it clear and to get back to your 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 laundering comment uh michael levy or levy uh is a guy that he used to be an energy analyst and now i think he's part of a hedge fund or something like that because he's a smart guy but years ago he he talked about he said now if if a country manufactures no automobiles zero but buys Five million automobiles every day from, let's say, Italy, imports them, paints them green, paints the cars green, and then exports them back to Italy and Europe and sells them. Are we a net exporter of automobiles? No, we're a net exporter of green paint. That's what we've done. And so the the oil refining analogy that Michael was talking about there is – I buy oil from you, I put it into my refinery, I turn it into gasoline and diesel and other products, and then I sell it back to you and I call myself a net exporter. I'm selling you green paint, man. <laughs> now, yeah. I'm not criticizing the process. I mean, you know, you want to make money? It's a legitimate way of making money and you're, you're providing a product that people need. But let's be honest about what you're doing. You're exporting green paint. So in this discussion, I've come away so far with two main takeaways. Mm -hmm. Number one is we're not going to seamlessly or in any near-term time frame get off of oil because it is central to our modern way of life. If we radically change our way of life, we then might be able to get off of oil. And then the second takeaway is our system is so complex, our global supply chains, and the systemic risk from any international hiccup due to Russia or China or a financial meltdown or any other international risk really can gum up this just-in-time uh, global import-export of green paint, in this case, the, hemoglo the hemoglobin inputs to our modern economy, because in autarky or uh, a world without trade, the U.S. has plenty of oil, not as much as we used to, and what we have now is mostly light, tight oil, which depletes very rapidly, but we still have a lot, especially relative to most countries in the world. But we cannot produce the things we need just from our oil. It has to be either build different types of refineries. And why would they do that? Because they're not getting the, the signals from the market to do that. Or we need to continue to merge uh, our oil, mix it with heavier fractions that we get from other countries' uh, flavors and types of oil. 